In this video, I'll be testing 13 of the most popular premium touring tires on the market to find out exactly which is best for you. As we've got a lot of tires on test, including the latest and greatest from brands like Bridgestone, Continental, Goodyear, Michelin, Hankook, Toyo, Redstein, and there's more, there's a lot of tires. I'm gonna try and keep this as condensed as possible, but first I just wanna explain what a premium touring tire is. They're sometimes called comfort bias tires, they're sometimes called high performance tires, and they're often just called tires. They are a tire that focuses on excellent safety in the dry and wet, so short braking distances and good levels of grip, excellent levels of comfort, low noise, and low rolling resistance to save you money at the pumps if you're using a petrol engine, or to save you energy on your EV. As always, I'll be testing them as thoroughly as possible, including the dry grip, wet grip, noise, comfort, rolling resistance, everything you really need to know to make your purchase decision. Let's get on with the testing. I've said it before, and I'm definitely gonna say it again, because of reasons like this. Wet handling in a tire is one of the most important categories. I mean, there's a barrier there, and it's often where premium tires make the difference, and in this test has proven that once again. The double coin, which was the cheapest tire on test, was an absolute disaster. In terms of grip, wet braking was terrible, wet laterally was terrible, but also subjectively, you'd go into a corner, you'd get boatloads of understeer, and then you'd sit there steady throttle, and then for some reason, you'd find yourself oversteering. So another reason, super cheap tires, absolutely avoid. The Nankang was next. Now that tire, the Nankang actually had good grip, but as I found with other Nankang products, it was quite an oversteery tire, which isn't ideal for the road, certainly not. And it actually always amazes me just how much a set of tires can really change the balance of a car. This is a front wheel drive, 1.5 litre Golf, and we've gone from a set of tires like the uh, Kumo, which were quite an understeery set of tires, all the way to the Nankang, which were majorly oversteery like this. So tires really do make the difference, and even I am often like lost for words of just how much they change what is a very mundane, boring car. Now that those two are out of the way, everything else ranges from good to excellent. The GT Radial wasn't the fastest tire of the group, but was one of the nicest to drive. Had this before with GT Radial products, they're always pretty nice to drive. Their grip levels are creeping up to the very good mid-range point. So impressive tire, they're certainly not a budget brand as we've proven with the grip data and the subjective handling. The battle of the old school mid-range brands, which I think of as Kumo, Falcon, Toyo, and Redstein. Well, this was clearly won by Redstein as it had by far the most grip of the four. In fact, it was one of the fastest around this lap, but it did feel a bit numb subjectively, as did the Falcon. The Falcon was a little bit better, but it didn't quite have the grip of the Redstein. But of the group, if you want a sporty wet handling tire, it's the Toyo. Quite enjoyed driving this, even if it wasn't as fast as the Redstone. Hankook and Bridgestone were very close on time and overall grip, but of the two, the Hankook was way more enjoyable to drive. The Bridgestone, honestly, there was nothing unsafe with the Bridgestone. It just had a load of understeer. And like I say, understeer is safe, and some tire companies prescribe to that, but that's just how Bridgestone's gone. Not my favorite thing, but I'm not marking it down in the subjective handling notes. Where I'm marking it down is it just gave you very little communication. Michelin, as always, they're another brand that's big on safety, and sadly that means understeer, but that's just how the Primacy 4 Plus is, but it's a very good steering tire, and I've said in other videos, laterally, as it builds up steering forces, it's perhaps not the fastest, but it's nice and linear, so it's, you understand what's happening. Of the remaining three tires we've not yet talked about, well, the Goodyear did feel a little bit bulky. It felt like it had some of the smaller amounts of sidewall support, but that's very good for things like comfort and rolling and resistance. But once you were turning, the tire turned very nicely. And in fact, mid corner to corner exit, as you were getting on the throttle, the Goodyear was outstanding. So it was quite a rewarding tire to drive as you were coming out of corners, because you could just stand on the throttle and you'd be surprised by the grip level. The Prelli, as we've seen with other tests recently, in fact, every category of tire I've tested with Prelli in the past 12 months, it's all had the same thing. They're one of the most fun tires to drive. I don't know if it's part of the motorsport heritage or what, but they are one of the brands that I always feel happier getting out of the car. And in this test, the wet grip of the Cinturato C2 was outstanding. It's a very good job, Pirelli. And finally, the Continental. Now, the Premium Contact 7 is brand new. The predecessor, the Premium Contact 6, 
was one of my favorite tires in the dry. If you've watched any of my tests, they'll attain to that. It's on my car at home in the UK, in my Skoda VRS. But in the wet, honestly, I never really got on with it. However, the Premium Contact 7 is now outstanding. Not only is it by a very small margin, probably my favorite subjectively, because it had just direct steering, the front and the rear of the car worked together, and it was just a lovely package all around. It was also one of the grippiest as it was joint the fastest. So Continental have certainly improved on the wet performance of the Premium Contact 6, which is where it really needed to improve, but hopefully they haven't taken anything away in the dry. And you know what, that's next. Naturally, dry handling isn't really a key factor for these tyres, and given it's quite a short course here, and I've said it before, it's a 1.5 Golf, all the times is pretty close, almost identical in some cases, but there are some subjective differences I want to talk about. Now, with dry, I know I focus on handling, but it's not just about handling. We also do aggressive lane change maneuvers to see how the tyre would react in, say, an emergency situation on a motorway. And fortunately, all the tyres passed with flying colours, apart from the double coin, which was just a disaster as always. You'd turn one way and the back would do its own thing as... Uh, never mind. And the Nankang, although had quite crisp, responsive steering on the front axle, and the rear decided it didn't want to be in line anymore as it did in the wet. But all the rest, absolutely fine in terms of like the stability during lane change maneuvers. And they are not my favorite things to do, I'm being perfectly honest. The rest, all good. If we cross-reference braking and handling, the Continental had a small grip advantage, uh, followed by Bridgestone, Kumo, Pirelli, and Hankook. As for the balance and drivability of the tires, well, that's probably a little bit more tricky to talk about as some of them were very, very close, but there are some standouts. If you want a cheap track day tire, because I know a lot of you 16 inch boys do ask me that a lot, it's the Nankang from the group because, although I was just being negative about it, I think the oversteer is going to teach you something on track and the front axle is sharp and crisp and it took the heat well. It didn't seem to have struggle with the heat, which is always a plus on track. And the Kumo, if you don't want to deal with that oversteer perhaps, perhaps the Kumo was best to the rest. But the Prelli was also very good, but by the smallest of margins, perhaps not as big a margin as the Premium Contact 6 was, but this is 16 inch. The Premium Contact 7 was the best still in dry handling. It just turned the quickest, it was the most direct, the steering force was nice and linear, as in the wet, and it was just an all-round pleasurable tire to drive with excellent grip. So thank you Continental for not ruining that of the Premium Contact 6, which was my favorite feature. I'm very happy to report the Premium Contact 7 is still the best in the category. The rolling resistance of the tires, which is how much the tire impacts your energy or fuel use, was a huge win for the Bridgestone Trenza T005. It was over 10% better than the next best tire. Given how well it performed in all the other categories, this is actually a very impressive combination of abilities. Goodyear placed second with the efficient grip performance too, living up to its name, and Toyo was third. Noise and comfort was, as usual, very, very close. The budget tire was actually the quietest on test with the lowest pass by noise, but in the car it was the least refined and had the least comfort levels of the group. So while the pass by noise was lower, it, it just wasn't a nice tire to be on. While all the other tires were incredibly close, if noise and comfort really is your thing, the Michelin Primacy 4 Plus or the Pretty Citroato P7 C2 have the smallest of edges over the field in my opinion. Sadly, I didn't have the budget to test wear this time. However, I do have a few tests out later this year, which will include wear. One of which is a UHP summer test and it includes warm performance. So make sure you subscribe for that. There's also another video due out in a few weeks, maybe a month, like a part two of this, testing a bunch of budget tires against the Continental to see if any of them could do. So I hit that bell icon. In last place by a landslide was the double coin DC99. If you want a tire that's extremely quiet for people you drive past, this is the tire for you. For anything else, it's just not the tire as it lost in pretty much every other category we tested, most noticeably taking 14, 14 meters longer to stop the car from 80 kph in the wet. That means when you were stopped on the best, you were still doing 45 kilometers an hour on the double coin. Go run into a tree at 45 kilometers an hour and tell me that's worth saving a bit of money. The Nankang Econex NA1 was next up considerably better than the double coin, perhaps, not a tyre that should be classified as great, as it had long wet braking distances in the dry and wet, poor aquaplaning resistance, high noise and high rolling resistance. It would however make for a fun 16 inch dry weather track tyre, if you don't want to fit a semi-slick. 
The GT Radio FE2 in 11th was another step on from the Nankang. Once again, GT have made a tyre that's enjoyable to drive, has good rolling resistance and good levels of comfort, and while it was only a few percent off in dry and wet handling, it did lose out a little bit in wet braking, but it was still 8 metres better than the budget, so think about that in terms of relativity. The Toyo Proxy Comfort and the Redstone Old Track finished in tied 9th overall. These two tyres had almost identical dry handling and dry braking results. The Redstone was the better tyre in the wet, extremely fast around wet handling and had better aquaplaning resistance, but the Toyo had a much lower rolling resistance as the Redstone was the worst in the test. 15% behind the best. The Kumo was the fastest tyre of the group around dry handling, though the margins were so small in the dry it didn't really affect the overall result. It was also very good in dry braking, good in wet braking, and had great aquaplaning resistance. A very impressive tyre, and would have finished higher if it wasn't for a high rolling resistance. 8th and 7th went to the Hankook Ventus Prime 4 and the Falcon ZE 310 Eco Run. Both tyres were very close in dry handling, wet handling, and wet braking, with the Hankook having a small advantage in dry braking. The Falcon was, however, significantly better in both straight and curved aquaplaning, but the Hankook had the better rolling resistance. Both these tyres are usually priced very well, and I've got absolutely no issues fitting these if that's the price point you're looking at. The Michelin Primacy 4 Plus wasn't quite as sharp as the Kumo, or any of the tyres for that matter, around dry handling, but it was excellent in the wet with the second best wet braking and great aquaplaning resistance. It also had a very low noise, great comfort levels, and good rolling resistance. Fourth and third places were filled by the Goodyear Efficient Group Performance 2 and the Bridgestone Terenza T005. The Goodyear was fantastic in both handling tests, proving to be the joint fastest tyre around wet handling and had excellent aquaplaning resistance. It was also quite uncomfortable with a very low rolling resistance. Highly recommended and it's another really well balanced tyre from Goodyear. The Bridgestone lost a few points for wet braking where it was pretty average and dry handling where it felt sluggish and down on grip compared to the rest, although the margins were very close. As I mentioned earlier, this tyre absolutely crushed rolling resistance, a full 15% better than the second best tyre, which was the Goodyear. If you drive an EV or a plug-in hybrid, this actually might be the best tyre of the group. Highly recommended. The Pirelli Cinturato P7 C2 has clearly had a significant update since I last tested it, and boy, it seems to have worked. While the tyre didn't win any of the 12 categories we score on, its only real weakness was curved aquaplaning. In every other test, it was within a few percent of the best, and subjectively a very well balanced and enjoyable tyre to drive too. It's a big step forward for the Italian manufacturer, and one I'm happy to recommend. Before we talk about the winner, let me paint a picture. Based on the overall scoring system I use, which can be found on the Tire Reviews website and adjusted yourself if you want to use a different weighting, the second to sixth place tyres were separated by just 0.8% overall. Apart from the budget double coin, and perhaps the Nankang, all these tyres were good tyres, it's a stacked group. So when I tell you the first place tyre was over 1.5% clear of second place, you know it's something quite special. And once again, Continental have dropped a new tyre to market and seriously moved the game on, most noticeably in the wet. Last year it was the Sport Contact 7, this year it's the Premium Contact 7. This tyre had a huge lead in wet braking, was joined fastest around wet handling, and had the fastest wet circle lag. Thankfully, it's also kept most of the dry handling characteristics I loved of the Premium Contact 6, and was excellent on the brakes. It wasn't a flawless run for the Continental, it was pretty average in aquaplaning resistance, external noise, and rolling resistance, but the lead it had in the grip categories led it to a dominating win. Yes, it is the newest tyre on test, and yes, based on this test, it's also the best. I hope you've enjoyed this test, don't forget to subscribe for the budget test out in around a month. Any questions, please ask below. All the data is on our Tire Reviews website linked in the description and as always, safe motoring.